Whoa. Hello world, this is Shruti Pandey and today is 28th of May. If you don't understand what this means to me or to many a fellow women, it's World Menstrual Hygiene Day and what a way uh, to start this off because last year through the entire week of World Menstrual Hygiene Day, I was writing posts on LinkedIn every single day trying to grab some eyeballs, trying to get, create some awareness and today I have with me Neha who has written a book about this topic, who's like an ambassador about a lot of things. And uh, I appreciate the fact that she's trying to bring in a change in the world by talking about certain things. And this has been the most quickest arranged podcast ever. So I'm so, so grateful, Neha, for giving me the time. And uh, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you, Shruti. I think, yeah, for me also, it's the quickest podcast I'm getting into. Uh, but today is that day where, you know, we are launching our book and, and I was in between so many things and I was constantly on LinkedIn as well. And then when you ping, I'm like, I should not lose out on any opportunity to spread this awareness. So in fact, thanks to you for, uh, for you know, taking that step and, and reaching out without hesitating that, you know, uh, why should I? So I'm, I'm equally honored and humbled uh, to be a part of this and, and let us together spread the message. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. And on that note, I want to understand what does this day mean for you, Neha? Like, what is this entire hula hoop about World Menstrual Hygiene Day? If you would like to share some thoughts about it. So I'll, I'll share a trivia, which frankly, I also got to know very recently on why 28th May is called World Menstrual Hygiene Day. So mm -hmm. an average menstrual cycle is 28 days. And, uh, and a menstruator menstruates five days a month. So that is how this came into being uh, 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 by United Nations WASH. Uh, so, you know, that is why the day. So I hope that is very insightful. That was very insightful for me. Um, what the day means more than the day, I think, uh, being, uh, 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 being a menstruator myself for, for over now, 20, 25 years, uh, and I've been brought up in a joint uh, traditional family in a two-tier city. So I know I've borne the brunt of the myths, the taboos, uh, the lack of awareness of menstruation, uh, and it has not been an easy journey. Uh, plus, I now have a daughter who's 12 years old. So, uh, so around two and a half years when I was trying to introduce this uh, puberty and periods to her in our conversation she being the today's world preteen uh, she had lots of questions to counter and I did not have answers to all of them and I realized I've been menstruating for 20 plus years and I have not really done study on this and you know what might be the awareness in 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 parts or you know in not so rural area uh, in not so urban areas so uh, that was going on in my mind and as we say that you know the the world conspires to then bring things together uh, while I was at that phase around two and a half year that I didn't want obviously my daughter to have any of those myths and taboos um, or, or have more awareness I also um, uh, was associated with uh, with uh, Dabang Girl it's a superhero uh, Indian superhero a girl superhero uh, and they have uh, like my my close friend Saurabh um, is the founder of the Bangal, and they have a comic series uh, which talks about uh, a lot of social issues and you know awareness uh, to children. Now, I was already associated with that, you know, in in advisory board in that capacity uh, and reviewing it. And Saurabh and I discussed that, you know, uh, my daughter's uh, questions, and then we said, why don't we use this platform? And how about if a Dabang girl, uh, who's also you know in that age group. Um, starts her period so you know we are bringing in a topic that if a superhero can menstruate it is as normal as that and and you know any uh, so so that was the uh, ideation or the seed of it uh, then one thing led to another and two years we both have like really put our heart soul time uh, to create this uh, book which we are launching today called period wonderland uh, every young adult's guide to uh, puberty and period so yeah, that that is the story, Shruti. Um, uh, how this book came into being. Wow, this is this is so amazing. And you know what, uh, Neha, you helped me remind my childhood all over again, uh, because uh, and I found some similarities in your story too. I mean, 
given the fact biologically we are same and we have been menstruating for a while now, I am raised in Mumbai, but I also come from a typical North Indian conservative joint family. And I don't remember my mother who is highly educated, you know, like she's a convent educated woman, but I don't remember she's sitting down with me and talking about menses. And uh, when I was 12, I remember, uh, you know, the, the phase where you're the class monitor or head or something of the sort. I remember one of my fellow friends, she came to me asking uh, or saying precisely, Shruti, my time is coming. And I was like, I don't understand what time is coming. Like, I was like, are you talking about what time is it now? Because, you know, every... And she's a Gujarati. So everybody has their own way of calling period a period. And before that, I had no idea what a period was. And she's asking me something which I don't know. And she's uh, talking to me in, in a jargon, which I don't understand. And she's like, Shruti, time is coming. Shruti, time is coming. And I'm like, no, I don't have time at 12 o'clock. I have break. Nahi hua. And I'm not able to understand the problem. And I was feeling so, you know, embarrassed that I'm not able to help this girl. And she's like, Shruti, something is happening to me and I need some help. And uh, that entire day, that entire, you know, conversation with her, made me realize how much we don't know about our own bodies. And precisely, you know, when these companies like Whisper or other pad brands would come to our school, asking only the girl child to come into the hall, assemble and give us the free pads as a marketing thing. And when you go back and I, I am kind of, you know, the topper kind of a girl. So every boy then would start asking, Vishruti, why did you call me? And I'm like... How am I supposed to answer this? I don't know how that's to because true. we were supposed to keep it all very hidden. Hush, hush. And, hush, yeah. hush, hush. and it's like, Sir, why did you call me? Why did you give me a gift? Why did you give me a Do you remember the time when we used to take smuggle pads to bathrooms? Oh, even now that happens. So, you know, while we keep saying that the world has changed and I'm very hopeful and obviously the generations have changed, yeah. but it's not just a problem still of rural areas, areas, the way we are talking, even in cities, because the generations are still there and the myths and the taboos. In fact, just before you reached out to me, I was making this whole video uh, covering conversations from men, from children, just to know what they know about puberty and periods from my housemates. Uh, I, I asked my friends, to have these conversations with their mates and then we, we'll collate a video about it but as you said it is relatable and similar experiences shared across sectors uh, some some face it definitely much more than the other but these these are the conversations we should have that you know everybody and this is such a big taboo and uh, we we have the power and the privilege to bring that change so i think conversations are are the starting point to break the taboo i have like follow-up questions to this like why do you think is this a taboo and how do you think can we normalize this like it's 2022 and still it's a taboo and how do we normalize it i think why it's a taboo is for for any taboo for that matter it goes on it is conditioning of generations on generations right and and only i think in last decade or so all these um, from inclusion perspective, people are more aware and people are consciously talking about it. So I think taboo is because nobody really questioned it. And, and you know, this conversation, books coming out, uh, the intent to reach out to realize our privileges and not just sit with it, but realize it and how do we repay to the society? So how do we make it reach to the rural areas? So while it might not affect us, but we have the privilege and the power to make a difference. So I think that is the start point on how we can normalize it. Uh, conversations, awareness, lack of awareness is a big thing. I mean, as simple as, um, Till I got into the inclusion space that now is my calling. Uh, until five years ago, uh, I considered gender as binary. So, so actually periods were a women thing. And, and you opened up uh, casually. I'm sure you didn't mean it, Shruti. But, you know, we say women and, and that is what we associate periods with. So this right. book also is about and, you know, we've covered. So uh, periods is not just a women's thing. Uh, there are everybody who has uterus uh, can have periods. And there are people... Uh, who identify themselves as uh, men or boys uh, and have uterus and they can undergo periods. There are people mm -hmm. who don't conform to uh, uh, gender binary identity. Mm -hmm. They could have periods. So that is a long way to go, I understand. But I'm saying uh, this is the second part. But even, uh, even in rural villages where people don't know about uh, gender binary and non-binary, even the awareness about... Uh, 
why periods happen and there are so many myths associated with it right okay. i was talking to my maid i'll i'll just uh, you know plug in that example and i was shocked i never i have heard about all the myths because in my family there were right so maybe it started with from a hygiene perspective don't touch things and i felt like untouchable in yes. the first like yeah mm-hmm. 10 years till i stepped you out of the house that. untouchable ye mat yeah so mat jao. exactly and especially if you have like i had my great grandmother as well so it was at mm-hmm. another level I so but but what i'm saying is um sorry i lost the thread yeah so i was talking to my house help about the myths so sarmadho and there was there were so many such right don't go to temple that is a consistent one i think everybody agrees because religion and when it comes to you know uh, the the sacredness of things the impurity word associated with periods is very high so that is a myth uh, but uh, what my house help told is uh, there are there is black magic done using this which i not heard of, uh, earlier she said there are there are black magicians who ask to get this and then they they tell you to eat it and then they can re- and she believed in that and she is so conviction with conviction she she said that they can do this and i've seen and you know people can hypnotize you and do all of that so that is the level of uh you know uh, myths we are talking about so it's like long way to talk go. about something and make it such a grave taboo that people start creating fancy theories around it I mean, because I people don't know what happens in period. No, for example, frankly, till I started this book, I didn't know the biology of really what happens. I mean, I don't know in school if somebody had ever even mentioned. Ah, uh, so I mean, I didn't know really what when happens. When you went to school and when you we, we were taught about reproductive organs, I think that was the most silent class ever. Absolutely. and that was the most quickest class ever because even the teachers get uncomfortable even we you know at least in my generation boys would sit this side girls would sit this side we are not supposed to talk to each other in general and everybody would be like heads down because oh my god it's talking about it genitals and oh, oh my god it's talking about our genitals and it's talking about reproduction but i think you reminded me of my grandmother Uh, and she's still very much alive and she would say that if grains are bought in the house i shouldn't be touching them because wo kharab ho jayenge so they would Absolutely. probably uh, like you you're not supposed to touch the pickle jars or grains and stuff like that because and i i don't understand like if i touch them how will they get like rotten or something like how do i create some magic in me that that would happen and uh, it's it's just also crazy fact and why do we associate periods with impurity i mean you and i are sitting here because our mothers bled <laughs> and they were going through periods like we can't come into existence if periods was not happening absolutely but i think okay just to give that benefit of doubt so now in the context it doesn't hold true and that is what it is for most traditions right so maybe really back in the days when there was no facilities of hygiene and awareness so so maybe you know uh, you have periods you change your cloth or whatever and you come back and maybe your hands are dirty and th- that was maybe the starting point but we have to understand that it's no more contextual so the the awareness should not be about how you don't touch it but how you become hygienic during that time what what are the do's and don'ts right, right? you can't make a human feel in human uh, uh, because of a natural process right, uh, right. and do you think I, i always started to have this question very recently in my head given the fact that you know now we are getting period leaves in some companies not everybody but some are realizing that it's very difficult for humans to be bleeding and then to be concentrating and working and stuff so do you think it's it's very traditional and that's how it was in the uh, previous days and eras maybe because they never had pads and stuff and it was maybe a hygiene thing that we were asking girls to take rest for 3 days or 5 days and not to do heavy duty task or you know take care of the temple so do you think it it was more of that back then which we are trying to get now in the corporate sector also like what what do you uh, think is happening so this this is a very very uh, debatable topic even in this area whether period leaves should be there or not uh, definitely period le- period leaves should be there but it if if we know the fact there are still s- that there, there is something called period poverty uh, which is the because of lack of awareness and hygiene uh, uh in rural areas how many students drop out due to menstruation uh so so uh, so i think uh, the question is more larger on um on uh period leaves definitely should be there but 
uh, but it is a choice that it, it's it's a choice that you know an individual menstruator makes uh, in terms of how much pain they have or don't have but definitely there should be an agency or a choice provided to avail that uh, you know uh, for 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 someone who who has bad bad menstrual cramps so yes. definitely i think it is not just about old days but there are people who undergo much more difficult menstruation than others and and we have to be cognizant of that fact as well shruti and i now see a very different trend forget about just knowing of periods but you know this generation the girls who are like 13 14 15 years given our lifestyles right. and eating habits uh, they just don't know um, periods but they also know about something called as pcod i remember a young fresher girl joining my team and she was like shruti you would aapko to pata hoga na pcod and i was like mujhe kyu pata hoga na like i understand from a female aspect i should be knowing about it but forget about normalizing periods having a disease around it or uh, with that particular organ is considered normal whereas it shouldn't be right like eating healthy having some exercise so that you don't get some cramps and stuff like that i think even that awareness with respect to health and hygiene on periods is required because that's ultimately leading to pcod isn't it uh, not not always i would not i would not like to connect that so obviously there are a lot of um, health uh, concerns that might happen due to uh, due to a uh, lack of taking care during menstruation and that is a fact and much more uh, in in regions which are which are not uh, you know as privileged or they don't have access to facilities uh, so uh, be it uti rti uh, that might happen uh, based on you know what products you're using how often do you change that uh, so uh, obviously there are a lot of health concerns and you rightly said shruti health and hygiene is something a very important topic that has to be created awareness on uh, related specifically to periods and uh, in fact in our book so we have divided it into six chapter one of the chapters is on myths and taboos one of the chapters is on health and hygiene so you know uh, how uh, how your iron gets lost so you know what kind of food you should uh, eat during that time how it's a myth that you should not do any stretching or you know you just sit in a room um how that helps release cramps as you were rightly saying you know when we exercise light exercises it also talks about which yoga poses might help you you know to relieve the cramps um so there is so much around and this is a monthly thing this is not a one time thing that you know you just cross that age and ha <laughs> right. so this is a monthly uh, natural process we are talking about so all the more reason uh everything around it we create awareness about and we talk about it so that you know it becomes uh, more normal and people don't have to suffer uh, you know this this monthly can you show us month. the book if you have it around <laughs> i have a very rough copy uh, so this is the period wonderland and we try to made it very very fun and engaging so there is a lot of humor as well because it's for children it's a graphic novel so here if you see this is like a period wonderland and it has got headaches he saw mood swing acne flowers uh, munching trees so what all happens so that is just a start uh, but what we have used is so this book can be divided into uh, two sections one is uh, one is actually uh, six chapters uh, which talks about puberty uh, then it talks about uh trip to one period wonderland where uh two uh you know uh from from a from a magic lamp to genies come and this is about four children who are making a difference to their tarkapur village uh so there is this genie genu who comes and then they explain the children the whole biological process of period so you know how egg gets released from ovary and you know what happens how the uterus aligning al shed all of that the third is uh, super power of period products so we have explained uh, uh, pads we have explained tampon uh, menstrual cup what is better um, in fact there is a section where we have also explained how to create pads because the whole intent yes. in our background whatever we is putting was it has to go to the remotest village so what are the challenges they face we cannot this is not just for an for a, for an urban audience Mm -hmm. uh then there is secrets of a fa for a fabulous you that talks about body changes and how women get very conscious so from acne to you know uh, breast development and how to not let you know others define beauty for you and how not to be body conscious and uh, the fifth chapter is magical food to rescue we've talked about health and hygiene 
and last is the danger land of myths so this is very interesting where the children are doing a whole event for the village because they want the elders to change and right. they've seen their parents uh, you know not not abiding by it so they do a whole event where they bring a whole transformation to the village uh, by quizzes right. by having an acting scenes and then you know engaging elders and then how their village becomes a period wonderland by you know everybody knowing about it and all so right. and as we are talking about this i'm getting a call from an ngo that i support and we had one of these initiatives where we were creating you know sanitary napkin kits and uh, what we were doing is really getting you know cotton cloths or sarees yeah. and stuff like that and uh, creating uh, stuff like that so this makes sense and i want to understand is this book only for kids urban rural wherever they are or can uh, adults like us also read it adults must read it i think before even we give it to children uh, and adults when i say everybody should read it so as i was saying if i had got this book even 20 so while i was making this book the insight that i got for 25 years i didn't know what really goes on in my body when i menstruate it has just become like a pattern right but now this uh, while while doing this research it gives me that uh, just another thing i would like to add is uh, because the intent is to reach far and wide uh, we are we'll be launching this book in five other languages which is hindi telugu tamil malayalam wow. uh, to start with and we have long term plans if we can uh, you know so like dabangal books have been translated and and sent to afghanistan as well so you know we want to go global and you know do all of that as well and then we also have plans we are working on to create a motion comic so you know different audiences so not just reading but this book converted into a motion comic so you get a video uh, you know where where as a as a story or as a movie somebody can see it so i'll well, well, yeah. you know, talking about this i was already getting an idea for me to act like a catalyst and connect you with somebody so there's a app which basically teaches kids sanskrit in very similar manner like you're talking so they create all these animations they create these characters and i'm thinking of connecting you with the founder or somebody so that because they are teaching kids and you can probably collaborate and do something about absolutely, this absolutely absolutely more than happy if that project would see the day of light because i think uh, it's it is something that we should be talking about and that's the least yeah. i can do for you thank you shruti i'll i'll look forward to that let us take that I'll offline and we'll see uh, do the needful as soon as uh, this one wraps up and i'll connect you with him but uh, this has been such a great great conversation and i understand you are having a very busy day today not just with the d day but a, a lot of things happening around the book so any parting thoughts that you might have before we wrap up this podcast uh okay uh, that becomes difficult there are so many things that i want to keep speaking about uh but i think uh, it is a responsibility if 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 you seeing this podcast uh, then you are privileged and uh, don't shy away from difficult conversations and this is special urge uh, to uh, to the non menstruators i will not say only men uh, but uh, from a gender inclusion lens i'm talking about everybody uh, be the allies talk about it uh, i'll uh, so when i'll release the video of people i'm very happy that a lot of men come out and talk about what they know what they don't know how they help so you know if men are finding it difficult to buy a pad or a menstrual product for their family member i i know this is very relatable and every such myth or taboo or what we face we can talk yes. for hours on our experiences and but even that is important to say the experiences on what the menstruator faces uh, and uh, just one thing it doesn't end there we talk about intersectionality shruti mm -hmm. so there are people so we have also covered so i was talking about the two sections sorry i missed out so the next section apart from the story six chapter story is learning island so we have tried to cover things like the challenges faced by by persons with disability uh that makes it even more difficult so what yes. happens if they are if they are physically disabled you know uh, or paralyzed or uh, mental disability where they can't feel uh, you know the flow so there are in the world we we have to realize our privilege there is so yes. much we can contribute uh so my parting thoughts would be just be conscious aware and spread the message and and do your bit at least in your personal capacity uh to to normalize and make this world more inhabitable inhab than inhabitable for 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 all of us and while others are privileged to see this i am very honored uh that you gave me your time today and i could do something and i hope uh, i'm able to create some impact and change and awareness with respect to this topic 
and thank you so much for doing that uh, with me and uh, giving me your grace gracious yes <laughs> and thank you so very great. kind and generous with your words shruti the pleasure was equally mine uh, any time uh, anybody wants to reach out and if we can together make any difference even to one person i think any effort is a good effort and and it is towards towards a better world so thank you for having me over thank you so much you have a good day you too bye bye